It's 2022 and happy new year, my friends. As is the tradition on this channel, we like to spend the early part of the year talking about our existence system. This is a system for existence. If you've been around for the last two years, you may have noticed the world has had its ups and downs. Things have been good and bad a little bit tumultuous here and there. And so it's useful to have an existence system. Last year, we talked about a version of this that I had assembled, that I had been using. It was a written document, a template that people could download and modify. But this year, I sort of took that thing digital. And so I'd like to share it with you. Maybe there's something useful that you can find, something that you can use in your day to day, something that you can share or implement. So we're talking today about Existence Systems 2022. This is the digital version. We've got three different broad topics to cover. First, the framework. Why do we need an existence system? How is this useful? What can you take from this and implement and use that might be useful? We're gonna talk about guardrails. Guardrails is a very important concept that I learned a lot about this year that really helped me become a lot more productive in general. And then lastly, I wanna share with you some of the actual tools that I use. Now that I know how to use the guardrails, now that I have a proper framework for using the tools, this all makes a lot more sense. So we'll start at the top with the framework. And one of the main reasons why this is a useful way to live and organize your day is to help us with our daily activities. I talked to a guy named Dean Jackson. And if you type in 50 minute focus finder on Google, you'll see a video from Dean Jackson and he helps people get focused. He helps people really get their thoughts organized. And when I was speaking to Dean, he talked to me about a concept of being a toddler at a picnic. And I was thinking, what are you talking about? And he said, well, this is a concept that, you know, a lot of people live their lives this way. They actually wake up optimizing their days really no better than a toddler at a picnic. They sort of are bouncing around. They're going and exploring things. They're looking at the slides of the jungle gym or the monkey bars, or they're bouncing around on the little springy giraffe. They are just following the next shiny object. Many people are living their lives that way. And I said, Dean, you're talking to one of them. My day feels like that very regularly. And so he said, yes, there are things that you can do so that you are not waking up and acting like a toddler at a picnic, but instead you are operating like somebody who's an Olympic bobsledder. You're part of a team who just wakes up and you jump in this high tech piece of ultra sophisticated athletic gear. You're with some of the most elite athletes in the world. You make tiny little optimized precision adjustments but that's it. The rest of your day is organized like a bobsledder. You've got a trajectory, you've got a path, you've got this shoot, this slide that you get into and you just, boom, right down there. So you're not acting like a toddler at a picnic. You're not curiously bouncing all over the place. You are optimized, you are precise, you are focused. So when you have this framework in mind, what we're saying here is we want to build the bobsled. We want to build the chute, the ramp that the bobsled goes down. We don't want to be living like toddlers at a picnic. Those are for our daily activities. But what about internal peace? Don't we want some mental calm and clarity and harmony? I know I do. So I think about this like a Zen garden. You can see here's an example of a Zen garden. This is the sand that is being raked around the Zen garden to create some order and some beauty and some nice calming energy. Very peaceful. And this is what we want our minds to be. But unfortunately, it gets interrupted from time to time. You get organizations trying to compete for your attention. You get notifications popping up all over the place. You get people in your neighborhoods duking it out on the social media sites. You have foreign countries engineering algorithms. You have political people slicing and dicing it out on the internet. And this is everywhere you look. You have constant interruptions. You have constant vying for your attention and it is interrupting the peace. It is interrupting the flow. It's causing chaos in our brains. It's causing chaos in our pattern of thinking. And so an existence system, daily rituals, where we can say our affirmations, where we can remember our gratitude, will help to re-smooth the surface, to re-rake the sand. And if we think about this like 
exercise, many people would agree it's obvious to go and exercise regularly and to take good care of your physical health, but we often forget about our mental health. So this is important for all of those things. We want to exercise our bodies, but also exercise our minds. And with that framework, we now can see the importance of these systems and talk about the guardrails. What are guardrails? As we're thinking about organization and optimizing our lives, guardrails are very important. I learned a lot about using these effectively. Here's what it looks like on the freeway. Why do we have these on the freeway? We can think about a couple of reasons. Well, one, it keeps people driving the same way, the same direction. So it keeps people focused. It keeps people centered. It keeps people organized. It keeps people safe. It helps them get to where they're going. These are the guardrails on the side. If this road did not have these guardrails, somebody might careen right off into the ravine. It also saves you from careening into oncoming traffic, from fighting fights or going directions that are going to be dangerous for, for you. It helps inspire action. It helps inspire focus. And it helps protect us, mostly from ourselves, from spiraling off out of control into some direction where we should not be going. And so as we think about our existence systems, and we think about the tools that we're going to be using in our existence systems that we're going to get to next, we have to make sure that we just don't go crazy with these new tools, that we just don't get a new chainsaw, but we've never used a chainsaw before, that they don't give us a new screwdriver and say, go change that 220 volt circuit over there, Johnny. We got to make sure that we're using these tools safely and effectively. So let's talk about these guardrails that we're going to put up to protect ourselves and our time and our energy and anything that is going to be trying to distract us from our ultimate purpose. We're just going to use one example here. Email. Guardrails for email. I don't know about you, but until I started using guardrails on my email, it's pretty chaotic in there. I don't even like to talk about it, but it wasn't pretty. But then I learned about guardrails and I learned about using my email only for external conversations only. That means here at the office, we're not sending emails about lunch orders to each other because that's an internal conversation. So we shouldn't be using our emails for that. That was a guardrail that eliminated huge chunks of emails coming into my inbox when our team switched to a different piece of software, which I'll tell you about. So we made a couple changes. External conversations only, no internal conversations. How about also unsubscribing from virtually everything? Okay, email, if it's only for external conversations and it doesn't need to be receiving newsletters, you don't need to be keeping lists or drafts or notes in there. It's only for external communication. It's only for email. No notes, no drafts, no action items, no to-do list items. You're not going to keep your reminders in there. It's not going to be like a more pleasant version of Facebook where you just check your email because you're scrolling the headlines. It should be zero emails in there because it's only external conversations and you're eliminating it. So we're going to talk about being an inbox zero person, and this is one way to do this. Here's a couple quick email processing rules. And the point here, folks, is that you can apply these rules to basically any one of these tools. You can apply these guardrails to any one of these tools. So for email, for example, here are a couple rules that I use pretty regularly. If it takes me two minutes or less to do it, I just do it. If I happen to be in my email and I can respond or do something in two minutes or less, I'll do it right there when I see it. I'm already looking at it. Might as well just do it. I also will immediately unsubscribe from things that I should not be subscribed to. Once you get down to inbox zero, you got to maintain that puppy. Immediately unsubscribe. Also, let's not get so crazy with the labels. I used to have hundreds of labels. Dialed that back down to big, broad categories. You can use the search function. You don't need to make your email an archive repository for every little piece of information, Rob. 
search for the stuff you need, file the stuff away that you need, but your email is not a note keeping app. Forward and archive the bigger tasks. We're gonna talk about this. So anything that you can't process right there in those two minutes or less, we can forward over to a bigger uh, task to do, uh, to do list tool that is actually built for action. Email is not built for that. We also want to focus on doing daily or weekly cleanses so that we are eliminating any of the spillage, the overage in our email. And folks, it's okay to declare email bankruptcy. I am a lawyer. This is not legal advice. But if it's unlikely that you're going to get to one of those emails anyways, that's six months old, sitting in your inbox with one of those notification red bubbles that's making your heart just burn, well, it's time to go. You can declare email bankruptcy, go out like Michael Scott, if you have to go that way, but it's okay to archive those puppies. If you need it, it's still going to be there. I promise you. So now, how do we get organized? Well, we had a lot of different things that we had on this list. We had journals and gratitudes and planning and note keeping and things to check in with on a regular basis. Well, how are we going to make that digital? We're going to use software to do it. Little apps on our phones and little pieces of software on the web that is basically available everywhere you go and accessible to anybody on any device. So it's a little bit more convenient than the written version. Now, I know a lot of people, and myself included, actually feel sort of a stronger connection to writing. I don't disagree with that. I think that what is happening here is there's a trade-off. You sacrifice a little bit by not writing this stuff, but you gain a lot more in terms of functionality, uh, mobility, integration, metrics. And so I've made the trade-off to go that way. So some people though have said to me, Rob, this sounds like a lot of different apps, a lot of different programs. I mean, you're going to be using this for your projects and email for external, but Slack for your intern. This sounds like a lot of work. This is crazy. I can't remember or keep track of all of this stuff. Help me. Well, it's very simple. It is actually something that we have a lot of familiar familiarity with. I thought the same thing too. When I had all these apps, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, why can't I just have one app that makes it all work? Why can't we just connect all the dots in one single app? Well, it's because it doesn't function that way. It doesn't work well. We got to separate these things out and we're used to doing this. You probably have something that looks like this around your house, don't you? I know I do all over the place. You can see these are tools that we use, and we all more or less know what these tools are used for, or at least can figure it out. We've got crescent wrenches in here. We've got needle nose pliers. We've got some drill bits down here. We've got a flathead screwdriver. We're looking at Phillips is somewhere in there as well. A lot of different tools that we use for different applications. We know what to do with it. If you're not a tool person, Think about a bathroom. Here's government exhibit 278 from the Galen Maxwell trial. They weren't using too many tools, I'm sure, but you can take a look at their bathroom and their shower. There's something probably like 35 to 40 different vials of whatever. Same thing over here. At least four or five different razors from my count. So think of these like different tools in the Galen Maxwell Jeffrey Epstein bathroom actually don't do that. But that's the point. You use this tool for this application. It's something that we're very familiar with. We do it regularly. And I promise you, even though it might seem overwhelming at first, this is something that actually becomes very routine. And you can even connect one tool into the other tool. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So without any further ado, let's get into the productivity stack. This is the actual list of things that I use. And let me explain this for you just a little bit so I can sort of uh, detail how this works. So as I mentioned, when we were talking about the email guardrails, we've got external communications, and this is a pretty big category. This is something where this has really taken me a lot of time to sort of whittle this down to clear out my emails because my email was really serving the function of a lot of these different things. I was using my email to sort of be my personal action item list. I was using my email to deal with a lot of our internal communications around the office. You know, somebody would say, hey, Rob, got a question on this. They'd send me an email rather than using the right tool. Same thing with projects, right? I'd sort of organize a label in my email or I'd have workflows in there or I'd label stuff and store it and that would be my knowledge base. And so kind of all this stuff was just sort of bunched up into this one piece of software and you can see how messy that can get. And so we don't want to do that. 
we want to break this stuff out so you can see how I've done that. So external communications, those go to Gmail. That's only for conversations that are taking place with people sort of outside your team. External stuff. Team conversations, the people that you're conversating with regularly, that happens in an internal tool that's built for internal conversations. Slack is a messaging software suite. Microsoft has, I think, their own version. There's many other versions of this, but it's built for internal communications. It's built for teams. Gmail is not built for that. They have their own version of an internal communication. I think they call it Hangouts, but it, it, it's a different piece of software built for a different purpose. And so we got to get clear on why we're using these tools. And just like you would grow, uh, go grab a hammer to use it for a nail, you would send your internal message through Slack. You would send, hey, what are we getting for lunch through Slack rather than an email. Similarly, we're talking about personal action items. Okay, I used to use my email as sort of like a running to-do list until I decided to use a to-do list app that's actually built for managing to-do list items. Go figure. And so I did that. I'm using now Todoist, which actually will plug into Gmail so you can see how you can stack these things together. So Gmail has a Todoist plugin. And so if you have something that comes in and you can't do it within those two minutes, as I mentioned earlier, and you say, uh-oh, I can't process that, but I want to maintain my inbox zero, no problem. Because of the Todoist plugin, you just add it as an action item within Gmail. And so you don't even have to remember really a different piece of software. You just have to add the plugin and you can just literally add an email as an action item as a to-do list. And so, that, so that's for your personal stuff, and we'll talk about that first. And so what's nice about this is that this, this personal action item list can really launch you into the rest of your day. So if you wake up and you say, I'm going to wake up and look at my to-do list, in your to-do list, you can have it trigger you to go to other pieces of software. So let me give you an example. So when I wake up in the morning and I should check my to-do list, which is on Todoist, it tells me you've got to go work out. So I use my fitness app. It tells me it's time to do your gratitude. So you've got some mental fitness work to do here. And it's also time for you to do your journaling and your affirmations, which are always going to be in the gratitude list. This is mental fitness. So I'll use it for those two things. We also have monday.com, which is for projects. So these are for action items that are dynamic, that require group efforts that require sharing of data, regular updates from other people. It's a project management software called monday.com. I'll show you that. We also use here at our office a piece of software called Process Street. These are for static workflows. These are for doing the same thing re repeatedly over and over again. More of a business, uh, business software, so we won't spend much time on that, but it is something very nice. We also have a place to store our knowledge. Where do we want to keep it? All of the data that we get as we're working through these things. We want to put it somewhere. And so I use Notion, OneNote, and PowerPoint. If you watch the show, we spend a lot of time in PowerPoint. Fitness, those notes are kept in an application called FitNotes. I'll show you that. And then lastly, there's an app that I like called Gratitude for Affirmations and Journaling. And so we'll start at the top with Todoist. Todoist is the main to-do list, the main sort of hub where I start my day. Every day, check into it, make sure I know what I'm doing first things first. And so you can see that when I took this screenshot, it was Friday, December 31st, emotive conjugation. So this was a little lawyer lesson, trying something new this year with these little lawyer lessons. Uh-oh, overdue task. I didn't post that one, but I need to do it. And so now I know. I am not going to be a toddler at a picnic today. I am going to wake up and boom, I know I've got an overdue task, so I get to go and do my work. So you can also see that when I took this screenshot December 31st, at 7 a.m., I had a recurring task. I had an action item to do my gratitude journal. And I'm going to show you the app that I use to do that, but you can see it's reminding me, oh, gratitude, every day, 7 a.m., you've got to do it. Todoist allows me to act like a bobsledder, knowing exactly what I need to do, where I need to go. 7 a.m., going to get a reminder to do that. 7.15, while I'm doing my gratitude journal, might as well just go ahead and do my affirmations, I suppose. And so it's going to have a reminder for me to do that as well. And typically I do those right before I go exercise at the gym, let's say that's 7.30 a.m. And so you can see that this is a recurring set of tasks. 
The to-do list now triggers me to go and do my gratitude and to do my affirmations. We talked about this as being a necessary tool to make sure that our Zen garden, the safe spaces in our minds are constantly nurtured and attended to. And it is important because we have a lot of people spending billions of dollars competing for our minds. And it's important to make sure that they are well nurtured and manicured. The app that I use for this is called gratitude. You can see here a couple screenshots from the actual app. And as I mentioned, the to do list tells me to go do these things. So I don't forget. Otherwise, I would I'd be like that toddler at a picnic bouncing all over the place. But since it tells me to go and do my journal, what it will do is actually give you prompts. So it'll say, hey, go to your gratitude section in this app. And uh, if you say, I don't know what to write about today, this is really overwhelming. It'll say, how about this? Write about someone who makes your life better. Or it'll say, uh, tell me about your best friend and you'll write about your best friend. And so you can journal that and it will actually keep track of that for you. It'll give you reminders. It will give you some metrics, it'll say how many times you journaled at the end of the year. Very nice, very neat. Allows you to attach pictures, and it's just a nice little nudge. Even if you spend two minutes on it, it's there. Now, while you're in this app, you might as well just click one tab over and do your affirmations. These are nice little series of cards, essentially, that you can assemble into these little folders, like my health, or like my mornings, or like my night routine, or my lunchtime routine, or if I'm you know, giving a presentation and I need an extra boost of confidence, they have a bunch of pre-written cards that you can add into those folders. So you can wake up and say, today will be a joyful and positive day, which is one of the cards that I use. And so I just go and I do my affirmations, I do my journaling, and then I can go right back on my to-do list and I can just say, uh-oh, done, boom, gratitude journal, done, affirmations, done, gym, done, all that will be back tomorrow because it's a recurring task. And so as we progress through, we want to continue to maintain this Zen garden, we want to maintain our minds, make sure that we are not allowing it to be commandeered by evil actors out there in the world. We also have to maintain our body. This is FitNotes. I believe this is an Android only app, but there are many apps like this in the Apple App Store, I'm sure of it. But this is a very basic workout app. Very basic. Remember what we're talking about, guardrails here. We don't want apps that are ultra sophisticated to do every single thing. They're not supposed to be Swiss Army knives. FitNote, this is a simple note keeping fitness app. Allows you to measure and record the different sets, allows you to program your different workouts, allows you to keep track, has different graphs and reporting, but it's up to you to basically build your workout. This doesn't have pre-recorded workouts. This doesn't have any instructions. It's very nuts and bolts. So you may need something a little bit more robust, but this is what I use. I am cognizant though, and wary of the apps that try to be everything for everyone. If you need a fitness exercise tracking app, probably best to just get a fitness exercise tracking app. If you need something to track your calories, probably best to just get something to track your calories. Same with other areas of fitness. So that is one app that I use. The next app, of course, the big app, Gmail. Email, this is the external communication hub, and this is important of course, because this is really where a lot of people spend all of their time. And it's important that we get ourselves out of here. We shouldn't be living in our emails 35 times a day. The concept here is to become an inbox zero person, to change your identity, to say, I'm a person who just doesn't have a thousand emails in my inbox anymore. There's a great book about this. It's called Atomic Habits, Changing Your Identity. Jordan Peterson talks a lot about this. I'm just a person who goes to the gym. I'm just a person who has zero emails in my inbox. I'm just a person who just doesn't drink. So it's becoming something and living that identity. And how do we do this? Well, we install those guardrails. We already talked about those. Here's a quick reminder. Emails are only for external conversations. Internal conversations happen elsewhere. No newsletters, no lists, no action items. It's not a to-do list. Two minutes or less, just do it unsubscribe from everything immediately, stop labeling and hoarding all of your data that can go elsewhere and forward your bigger tasks, clear out your email regularly and declare email bankruptcy if you need to. So emails are for external communications. What about internal conversations? What about emails with your team or the people that you work with on a regular basis? You may already be using a tool like this here at our office. 
we use Slack. You can create different channels for this, very similar to other pieces of software like Discord, but we don't use emails for these internal conversations. This is from the Slack website. You can see this is a fake screenshot of Acme Company, and they've got different channels for different projects they're working on, like billing and engineering and ops and sales and support. And so you can keep your communications a lot more organized if you're not cluttering your email up with them. We use Monday, monday.com for projects. So projects are a little bit more dynamic. We were talking about your personal to-do list. I use Todoist for my daily activities. Wake up, know exactly what I need to do because I've got my recurring tasks repeating regularly and I know exactly what I need to do when. But sometimes I need help from other people and monday.com is a good tool for that. You can see this is very, very versatile tool. You can use it in a multitude of different ways. We use it for projects that require multiple people's input, for keeping tracks of events, keeping tracks of things that need to be done when I use it for the docket for the show. Very powerful tool, something that we use regularly. Process Street is another tool that we use. This is for internal workflows. This is for sort of like assembling a project. If you have to do something over and over and over and over again without changing much, this is a very good tool for this. So the analogy that I've used regularly is like making a sandwich. Sometimes you want a sandwich with tomato, sometimes with lettuce, sometimes with mustard, mayo, whatever else you want to put on there. You might want to have instructions for making that sandwich. This will help you instruct somebody who's never made a sandwich before, give them the exact details they need to make the sandwich. And you can basically digitize it. You can create conditionals, very powerful piece of software, but much more for business or for, for you know, static workflows that don't change. We also have OneNote. OneNote is a very, very powerful piece of software. Most people are familiar with this one. OneNote is now saying that Microsoft is going to be announcing something that is very similar. It's called Microsoft Loop. Microsoft Loop is going to be competing with this piece of software called Notion.so. Now, either one of these pieces of software, I'm using both of them right now. I'm sort of you know, kind of experimenting where I want to live for the foreseeable future. Notion.so, very new, very innovative company. Microsoft Loop is going to be competing with them directly. But they're both serving the purpose of storing knowledge. We're keeping a knowledge base somewhere. Remember, we're not keeping it in our emails. We're not keeping it in our to-do list. We're not keeping it in our project. We're keeping it somewhere else where the knowledge doesn't need to be overly accessed by a bunch of different people where it's not part of a project. Instead, this is where we sort of offload stuff from our brains. And the other tools are used for action. Emails for communicating with people externally, Slack internally, and the other tools are to help you get a job done. They're not supposed to be repositories. They just get big, fat, bloated, and unused. And so I'm very much looking forward to continuing to master these tools into the 2020 new year. My question is, what about you? What are you excited about here in the new year? There is a lot. There's a lot of new technology. The world is adapting to now living in this remote environment. And so these types of tools and these skill sets, I think, are going to be even more and more relevant into the future. What systems, what software are you using and how will you make 2022 better than 2021? There's a sign at my gym that says effort is your responsibility. I look at it every morning. It's a good reminder. Sometimes I don't want to hear it, but it is true. Effort is my responsibility. And so I've got to make sure that I'm doing what I can to make the best of this new year in spite of everything that is going on around me. And so I'd love to hear from you. I'm super passionate about this stuff. And I think that it is always good to continue to hone your skills and always explore and experiment. Try things, see if it works. If it doesn't, toss it, try something else. And so I want to hear from you. What are you using? What is the most interesting thing that you've incorporated or implemented to make 2022 a rocking year for you. Let me know down in the comments and happy new year, my friends. I hope 2022 is off to a very prosperous start for you and your families. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.